Hi, I'm Jacob here with Vaught RV in Fort Worth, Texas, and today we're going to be talking about your Force HD. First things first, we'll come over here to your hood release. Got one on the passenger side, one over here on the driver's side. And then, once those are removed or released, we can come to the front of the hood. We've got a nice place to grab a hold of here. That hood will just drop forward. Customers usually going to be getting under the hood for windshield washer fluid reservoir. Uh, most everything else can be handled at Freightliner would be your first choice. Uh, any mobile diesel mechanic would be able to work on uh, this particular chassis as well. It's a really widely used chassis. Uh, we've got the windshield washer fluid filled up for you now. Uh, all the other fluids on the coat should be full and topped off for you. We had the chassis uh, serviced and that would have included uh, having your uh, oil changed and all of your fluid levels either topped off if necessary and all your grease points uh, in the chassis would have been checked and greased. So that's all good. Uh, coolant here, if you ever do have to add back to that, just uh, make sure that you're following along with this uh, sticker over here and adding back the specific coolant that they're calling for uh, in this engine. It's called purple and that kind of looks pink to me, so uh, I would go ahead and go along with the, the what they're calling out on the sticker. That color could change over time uh, as it goes through its heating cycle. Um, you do have uh, your engine air cleaner is going to be in here uh, and behind this housing. And then you've got your engine oil fill right up top here. And I believe on this chassis we'll have our dipstick over on the driver's side. So we'll move on around and uh, catch a view of that over there. And here we go. That is your engine oil dipstick right there. And then our uh, Allison transmission dipstick is right here. I do believe that you can check the transmission fluid level on this particular chassis um, through the uh, electronic transmission controller. And that's usually gonna be just as accurate, if not more accurate than the actual dipstick here uh, that goes down into the transmission. Uh, just for using either one of those means of checking the transmission fluid level, um, you'll wanna make sure you've got the transmission actually heated up. Uh, and then once it is heated up, you'll just have the coach idling in, in, in uh, neutral to get your proper fluid level. It'll take quite a bit longer to get heat in the, this transmission than it will in your daily driver. Um, so maybe 10 or 15 miles uh, at 70 miles an hour or so will usually do the trick. Uh, but i just give that example just because it is a, a little bit longer uh, due to the, the capacity of transmission fluid that, that are in these larger transmissions. Got your power steering fluid reservoir here. A lot of that kind of stuff... Uh, is kind of similar to, to what you're going to have on daily driven pickups. It's just kind of bigger and a little more heavy duty. Uh, you will uh, notice that you've got a large fuel filter there um, and we would have uh, had that replaced uh, uh, along with the uh, oil filter uh, whenever we had the chassis serviced here recently. I think it was a day or two ago that we actually had it done. Um, as far as the charging system on the chassis, um, you're going to notice that there won't be a set of batteries up here under the hood where you might expect to find uh, those to actually start the main engine. We'll see those in the storage compartment uh, right back here uh, along with the house batteries. All right, so moving along, um, we're gonna go right past the driver's door here. We're gonna talk about some of the uh, driver's controls inside the coach once we get in, in, inside there. Um, but just kind of pointing out a couple of items that you'll wanna know about. Uh, if you are going to be starting this coach uh, and it's gonna be below 40 degrees uh, when you're gonna start start the coach, you'll wanna plug it in. Uh, and this is just the, the place where you plug in an extension cord and then put that into a 15 amp outlet. Uh, and that'll run the grid block heater uh, on this engine so that it will start up easily uh, in cold uh, weather. You've got a diesel fill over on the driver's side of the coach. You also have another diesel fill and another separate diesel tank uh, just like this over on the passenger side of the coach. So um, if you are going to run through both of the tanks, um, you will be filling from either side or both sides of the coach um, if you're going from say any lower than about uh, between a quarter of empty and half full. Uh, somewhere in between those two uh, points you're going to need to fill up on both sides of the coach if you want to go to completely full. Def uh, fill is right here. Uh, you've got def gauge right inside uh, the dash gauge cluster. I'll point that out once we get inside. Uh, side view camera is going to engage when you hit your turn signals uh, automatically and you should have a nice view of that on the infotainment screen at the dash gauge cluster. 
This coach has got slide topper awnings, so that's a nice uh, added feature. Um, those will automatically extend and retract as you run the slides in and out from inside the coach. Here's that battery storage compartment. We've got your two AGM chassis batteries, and then we've got two large AGM style um, uh, coach batteries right here. It looks like these are almost brand new, uh, and these have a good charge on them, so you should have some good life out of those. All these storage compartment doors are going to open up to the side of the coach as opposed to opening up um, to where the door is going to lift up in the way of the slide so that that will clear the door no problem anytime you're running the slide in and out. Uh, this storage compartment here has your charger and inverter. Just, that's just kind of for your information so you know where it's at. There's really nothing that you need to worry about uh, switch wise or working on. Uh, concerning the inverter out here, you've got a remote control inside. You've got your uh, automatic transfer switch and surge protector uh, for the coach right there. And we'll see your short cord that is uh, attached to that and then powering the coach uh, through that once we get a little further to the rear of the coach. Next storage compartment here is going to be just some nice storage and it does pass through uh, to the other side of the coach if you look up up there. So that's a nice feature to have. This storage compartment here has your diesel. Uh, generator, gen the generator has been serviced, um, so take note of the hours uh, that we're showing on, on the clock here. It's 612, um, so we've got you three quarts of 1540 oil in there, uh, a new oil filter and a new air filter just a couple of days ago. Um, this generator is going to put out about 67 amps of output, uh, so that's going to be 17 amps more than what you're going to get on your 50 amp short cord in some. Uh, or a lot of locations so just keep that in mind if you're ever running into a situation where you need a little bit extra power on those really warm days or whatever you could fire up the generator uh, of course you want to unplug from shore power first before you do that but it'll be 17 amps or so extra power in a time of need you can start the generator outside here um, but you'll typically use the remote switch inside the coach for starting the generator that's usually going to be used for technicians this is your circuit breaker switch here if you ever have the generator actually on and running but you're not putting any power inside the coach this is your first place to check if it's in the off position that's uh, what you're going to experience and all you'll want to do is flip the switch it's just like a light switch back up to the on position and that'll reconnect you um, back to the electrical grid uh, for the inside of the coach this reservoir here just has some automatic transmission fluid in it and uh, this is a hydraulic pump that's utilizing that fluid to run your leveling jacks and we'll look at the leveling jack uh, controller and go over that once we get inside the coach. Generator exhaust is going to get hot when the generator is running, uh, so just keep that in mind and be careful of that. You've got two furnaces on this coach. This is going to be your rear furnace. We'll see the front furnace once we get over to the passenger side. We did install a stacked washer and dryer for you, um, and that is the exhaust uh, for the dryer unit. Uh, once we get inside the coach, we'll kind of go over some of the controls and the location of the washer and dryer. This is going to be your wet bay. Pretty simply uh, laid out wet bay. It's got kind of everything you need um, without a whole lot of clutter. You do have a nice extra light uh, in this storage compartment. And if I didn't mention before, most all the other storage compartments do have lighting. Uh, I'll point out the main switch to run that once we get inside. Um, but right next to the light switch for this storage compartment, you've got your uh, cable input. So if your park is going to provide um, coax cable uh, service you can connect into it uh, via this input here uh, you can't fill this uh, over your TV or your computer but we do have some warm air blowing in here through this duct and that's running off of this rear uh, furnace so if you are going to be cold weather camping and that's anything below like 30 degrees or so and you're actually going to be with the coach so these tanks are going to be uh, wet and the, the lines and everything in here are going to be wet and in danger of freezing if they're not kept warm. Uh, to keep this bay warm, you just run the rear furnace and that's the, the furnace that's controlled with the thermostat in the bedroom. And you're just uh, setting that thermostat up top of the coach so that you are comfortable inside of the coach. And as long as you're comfortable inside of the coach, that's going to heat this area sufficiently to keep it from freezing. Um, right down below uh, where that warm air is blowing down, we've got a switch here, and that's what's actually going to run your macerator. So you can see um, that you've got your sewage or black tank dump going through this black um, handle. 
and that's running through this dump valve and going into this full way. You've got your gray uh, dump valve over here and that's going into this gray dump and into this full way. And then on a lot of RVs at this point you could just go straight out of the coach but this particular coach has the added feature of having a macerator. So we're going into the macerator instead of directly out of the coach and the switch actually turns a uh, pump that kind of grinds and chews and pumps the waste coming out of the coach so that um, if you were uh, at a non-full hookup campground or campsite and you were dumping uh, your coach at uh, a sewer on the way out of the park or something like that, a lot of times you can get lower than your sewer inlet. Uh, with this uh, macerator setup, that would be uh, one of the times that you would actually benefit from being able to sort of pump your waste uphill. All right, so if you didn't want to utilize that macerator, um, you could hook up a traditional style gravity uh, sewage hose uh, to this outlet right here. And you just want to make sure that you hook the hose up here um, before you open up either of these valves. And as a matter of fact, you don't ever want to open this cap here um, bef uh, with either of these valves open. They need to remain closed until you've got the cap open and the sewer hose installed. So uh, going that way, you could kind of dump the uh, waste system on the coach through the traditional manner. Um, on uh, having fresh water going into the coach, you've got your city water connection right over here. Okay, and when you connect up to the city water connection, you will either be taking the water, uh, the city water pressure directly off of the spigot that you're connected to, transferring that to all the pressurized plumbing on the coach, or if you turn this valve over here to tank fill, now we just turn that valve counterclockwise, you could fill your fresh water tank. And if you are going to utilize your city water connection to fill the fresh water tank, you'll just want to remember uh, to take this uh, fresh water tank fill valve and turn it back to close uh, when you're done filling the fresh water tank. This particular coach, you don't want to leave your fresh water tank or filling your fresh water tank unattended. Um, it is located up inside the coach, um, so it can be protected from cold weather. Um, but it is there is a little bit of an increased danger if you overfill that tank of it rupturing and causing a little bit of trouble inside the coach. So I'm going to point that out and so you'll understand a little bit more why um, once we're inside there. But that is the reason for this uh, warning right here. So they're saying do not leave uh, that system unattended so you don't overfill that tank. You probably would be okay. You've got overflow vents um, coming out of that freshwater tank so it probably wouldn't cause any uh, actual damage to the coach and that would be water damage but you really just don't want to um, even mess with that so speaking of water um, you want to have a water pressure regulator um, either at the spigot or at the water inlet here um, when you're taking city water and that would be either taking it and using that water for pressurized plumbing in, in the coach or if you're just uh, filling the fresh water tank once you've got the fresh water tank fill, uh, filled and you actually want to use uh, water off the fresh water tank um, you'll have a water pump switch inside the coach and we'll show you where that's located uh, you do have a filter housing if you wanted to install a whole house water filter we usually ship these coaches uh, out without them installed uh, we don't know if you're going to go into storage or go into direct use or what we do have those available here um, if you wanted to purchase one um, on that filter housing you've got a wrench here for removing that uh, you will want to kind of just use the, the filter wrench for removing that housing. You don't want to use it uh, installing that housing. It is plastic and, and a lot of folks will over tighten and crack that um, if they use the wrench when tightening. So again, it's just for loosening. Um, you've got your cold and hot low point drains right here. And those are going to be utilized, say after you winterize the coach, you want to flush all the antifreeze out of the pressurized plumbing system, but you don't want to fill up your waste tanks and then cause extra work for you to have to dump those. Uh, you'd run most all the antifreeze out of the coach through those low point drains right out on the ground. That antifreeze is going to be environmentally friendly, so you're not going to have any trouble there. Uh, you've got an outside shower here. It's going to be utilized for uh, cleaning up after uh, working in this waste area. Uh, you can also use it for uh, shower and hosing off pets and stuff like that. You do have a black tank flush on this coach, and so that's going to take pressurized water from this inlet here and go directly to the black tank. Uh, just make sure you don't ever run any water through that inlet without this black tank dump valve being already opened. Um, if you did that, you would overfill and overpressurize that tank and possibly um, spill that out into the living area in the coach.
All right, so we got your water heater here, and this is a combination um, 110 electric and propane fired water heater. Uh, if you want to use the electric portion of the water heater, you've got this switch right here to turn it on. You've got to make sure that you've got water already in the 10 gallon tank uh, before you turn that on. If you don't, just like at your normal residence, you can burn that element out. Uh, you could run the electric and uh, the propane uh, fired side of the water heater at the same time or either or whichever you like. Got your shore cord storage compartment here and that shore cord is on a nice heavy duty reel uh, with the switch to run the cord in and out right over here. This is your propane storage. This is going to be the only storage compartment that doesn't have a lock on the door handle. Uh, you're going to fill the propane tank through here or a technician will and they'll fill till they make liquid propane out of here. If you ever need to shut the propane off, uh, you'll take this valve and turn it clockwise until you can't turn it anymore. That'll have the valve or the propane tank in the off position. Uh, if you want to use propane like we are today, you'll turn that valve uh, counterclockwise till you can't turn it anymore. All right, see your rear view camera. Uh, that will engage on the infotainment center uh, whenever you put the coach in reverse. And I do believe that you can select uh, for that to be displayed all the time while you're driving as well, if you like. Uh, you got a really heavy duty looking uh, hitch receiver here. I'm not particularly familiar with those, but it does look like this coach was set up to tow a little extra heavier than most. Um, that's gonna be larger than your normal style hitch receiver, but you do have an adapter and we'll point that out uh, in one of the storage compartments that's gonna adapt you out to your normal two inch uh, receiver. Uh, really nice features that you already have air plumbed back here. So if you're gonna do air brakes on a trailer or tow vehicle, uh, you've already got the air back here and then that's your seven way for the power uh, for your lights and everything else. All right. The storage compartment you've got um, an air hose uh, and then you've got a, a air uh, chuck for filling up your tires on the coach you could connect this up to uh, that outlet that we just pointed out for your trailer um, but there'll probably be another couple locations that you could tap into on the air system on this coach if you wanted to as well got a propane quick connect right down here so if you want to connect into the propane system on the coach use a uh, grill or something like that you'd be able to got you another storage compartment all your uh, storage compartment lights are LED so it's gonna be a nice power saving and not get too hot for you so here's that uh, hitch receiver adapter that I was talking about so that goes from the larger to the the size we're more accustomed to seeing out there and it's got a heavy duty pin that comes with it Here's the furnace for the front of the coach. Got another storage compartment access. Main engine exhaust will get hot when the engine's running, so just be aware of that. We've got another storage with some nice tall pass-through. Got our outside TV right out here. And this um, stereo is actually a DVD player as well, so that'll be your DVD for the outside TV and, and the main idea behind having all that is you're playing through these nice stereo speakers as opposed to the flat screen TV speakers. Uh, so when you're outside, you got a lot more of that ambient noise. Uh, these are gonna be able to cut through that a little more than the uh, flat screen TV speakers will. You should have that TV hooked up to the antenna uh, that's on the roof of the coach and you should be able to get the coax input either from satellite or cable uh, to run through this TV with no problems. You'll have a key that'll lock this compartment uh, for security so you don't have to worry about the radio or TV being stolen. And then this is going to be our final storage compartment. <clears throat> All right, notice that as I'm opening and closing the door here, our steps are not uh, moving in or out. If I wanted those steps to go in, say if I was uh, going to be parking in a parking lot or something like that, I would just turn this switch here to the down position. Now when I close the doors, or the door, those steps are gonna go ahead and go in. Watch your feet as those are going in and make sure um, before you level the coach, if the coach is gonna drop very much, um, that you're gonna clear these steps so that they don't get damaged. 
But the main key, the main thing is to watch out for is uh, having uh, personal injury. So if you leave the step switch in the, the position we had it in originally where the step stayed out and you close this door and you turn on the ignition, the steps are going to automatically go in um, as if you'd had the step switch um, in the position that keeps them out. So the idea is that it doesn't matter the position of that step switch. When the main engine is running and this door is closed, these steps are going to go in automatically. So you're not going to be going down the road with them hanging out of the side of the coach. Just going to hop up in here real quick and uh, show you where our awning switch is. And then we'll go ahead and run our awning light out. So we've got a, a switch here that's labeled front awning in or out. We're going to press the out portion of the switch. Be able to see that awning roll out. This is a nice fabric awning um, with an aluminum protector. So the coach is stored outdoors. That's going to keep that awning uh, looking new and working properly for longer than it would otherwise. You can adjust the pitch on the awning uh, by grabbing a hold of the adjusting arms on either side of the awning. Um, that's something that, that it, there's a label that kind of instructs you on that. So you should be able to manage that. Um, once you've got the awning out, you've got a switch over here for front awning light on off. And once you put that switch to the on position, you're just going to have this nice strip of LEDs uh, on the awning uh, to light up for you. We'll go ahead and run the awning back in. This uh, particular awning does not have a wind sensor on it, so just do be careful and be mindful um, of the wind as you're using the awning. Anything above about 10 or 15 miles an hour, you want to go ahead and bring the awning in. And anytime you're going to leave the coach unattended, definitely since it's uh, easy enough to just press the button here. Uh, go ahead and run that awning in for those occasions as well. Um, I do try to remember to go ahead and turn uh, the awning light off um, when I'm not using that awning. But another good benefit about having a fabric awning is if you did build up just a little bit of heat um, from those LED lights like I've seen them do in some cases um, by forgetting and leaving that awning light on while the awning is retracted. Uh, if you had a vinyl material awning, sometimes that can melt and damage the awning and the LED light. Whereas uh, if I've seen folks do that uh, with the fabric awnings, it really doesn't hurt anything at all other than maybe uh, run down your house batteries when you didn't expect them to. to. So just watch out for that as well. Um, the other switches that I have here are our main entry light on, our hall light, um, our storage compartment light switch and they've got a nice little uh, red light indicator here to let you know if you're kind of running those when you don't really in, in, intend to be running them and we don't want to use them anymore today so we're going to go ahead and switch them off. The porch light is just the LED light right out here outside the main entry door. Go ahead and turn that off. Um, this switch here which also has a nice red indicator letting us know that we are in the use mode is the switch that disconnects us from our house batteries. Um, and it is to be utilized basically just the way the switch is labeled. When you want to use the coach, you'll press uh, the rocker, or the, the upward portion of the switch, uh, and as soon as the light illuminates, that should turn everything 12 volt on inside the coach so you can use the coach. Um, if you want to store the coach, just press the uh, top portion of this rocker switch one more time. When the light goes out, everything inside the coach 12 volt should go out. Um, and that's just going to be there for you so that you're not having any inadvertent 12 volt loads running those uh, coach batteries down as you're parked. Um, on this particular coach, you should be able to put the coach in store mode where the light is not illuminated and retain the functionality of the automatic battery charger so that when you're plugging the coach into the 50 amp outlet or you're adapting it into a 30 amp outlet or whatever, um, you still will be getting the full use of the battery charger. So. Uh, the battery chargers will be maintained, or the, the coach batteries uh, will be maintained properly uh, in the storage uh, mode. Uh, here is that step switch again, awning switch again, and then that is where we ran uh, the awning light. All right, so we're in here where it's nice and warm now, and we're going to go ahead and run our slides out uh, and talk about some of the features inside the coach. We already ran our leveling jacks down as you would want to do before you run the slides out on this coach, um, and then 
whenever we're getting ready to move the coach or before you get ready to come pick it up, uh, we'll actually want to make sure and run the slides back in. And then at the very last, we'll, we'll run the jacks up. So I'll go over all that uh, in a little more detail. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and run the slides out. So there's a switch that's kind of hidden over here um, while you're trying to see uh, through the camera lens. But I'll go ahead and run the slide on out. And then once this slides out, you'll get a lot better view of that along with a lot of the other controls um, for the 12 volt items inside the coach. That's our slide just running out. And this is a um, flush slide whenever it is fully extended. So that's why it's got the tilt as it's running out. And then you'll notice that it'll kind of even right out. Uh, once the slide is fully extended and that is what allows you to get this nice uh, feature of having just the the even flush transition from the carpeted area uh, to the tile floor over here really love this tile floor i'm a little little particularly uh, attached to it since other than the color i think it's the exact floor i installed uh, in my house a couple years ago mine is just a little darker uh, I wish I had gone with a little lighter color because it mine shows up my dog's hair really bad This will be great uh, if you have pets, but like you got kids or whoever going in and out while you're camping uh, These floors are so much better uh, than the carpet that I used to have to deal with up until a few years ago So back into our um, 12 volt controls over here. They've got this compartment nice and lit uh, It can kind of get lost behind this curtain here. They've got it sort of blended into the um, cabinetry of the coach so well that it, that you can lose it so hopefully me mentioning it a couple times uh, by the time you get the coach and get it home you you'll remember that I said it's kind of over here behind the driver's area um, but this switch here is going to be your charger and inverter controller uh, like I mentioned er, a little earlier um, the charger function of the the charger inverter is fully automatic so just plugging in or running the generator is going to have that feature uh, running as it should uh, the power switch here is what's going to turn your um, inverter on and the inverter is what's going to make um, 110 power off of your coach batteries and the main function of that um, is going to be to run your residential style refrigerator that you have for cooling groceries on this coach um, but you should also be able to use uh, your a few of the receptacles uh, the 15 amp receptacles on the coach if not all of them uh, and then you, you'll usually be able to, to run like your, your TVs um, and your sound equipment, uh, which those are all 110 items uh, through the inverter and therefore running those off of uh, the 12 volt battery. Just keep in mind when you're doing that, if you don't have any solar charging coming in, uh, if this coach is equipped with solar charging or if the main engine's not running, uh, while you're running the inverter, you're actively discharging your batteries and that's an additional discharge to the, all the other 12 volt items you num normally run on those batteries, such as the lights and everything we have running here. So um, it's absolutely uh, normal and it, it's a great feature to have and you'll wanna use that a lot. Um, but keep in mind when the main engine's not running, you could run the risk of running your house battery down. Other than that, it's gonna be trouble free for you. To keep track of that, the house battery voltage, you've got a readout up here and you're gonna find several other readouts uh, throughout the coach for the house battery voltage. Um, anytime we're plugged in and charging like we are now uh, with those nice new AGM style batteries, you're gonna be reading up in about the area that you're seeing there, so the mid uh, 13s. Um, as your house battery drops down to about 12.1, 12.2 volts, you will wanna think about starting up your generator or main engine, especially if you're running uh, those all right, so we've got our gauges right down here. Um, so LPG is gonna be our propane tank. That's showing four lights illuminated when I'm pressing down on that for full. Uh, my battery's always gonna show uh, four illuminated lights for uh, C, which stands for charging, anytime we're plugged in or the generator's running. Uh, if that battery voltage is, I believe, above 12.5, we'll have three lights illuminated. Anything above 12.2, we'll just have two lights illuminated. Um, and we'll show the F for fair and anything below 12.1, I think we'll just show this one light up here and that the L there stands for low. So that's your propane um, and battery gauges. Uh, your fresh water tank gauge is gonna use the same light system 
Um, so I actually have it full to a third of a tank. So we're just illuminating the two lights there. And you can see one, one light illuminated is E for empty. Two is uh, one third, three is two thirds. And the F would stand for full. Over here on your black tank and your gray tank, uh, we should show both of those empty. You may have just a little bit of water in the very bottom of the black tank that's hitting on that sensor there and displaying the one third um, for me just flushing a little bit of bleach solution through the system uh, that I did. So we did flush your black tank completely, um, but then I went ahead and flushed some bleach solution through all the plumbing after we did that. Um, on your gray tank, I think I went ahead and opened that up and just dumped it out on the ground out here, but your black tank, with this being a used coach, we don't want to do that. It's actually going to be uh, good for you to have just a little bit of uh, water in the bottom of that tank. Maybe add a uh, black tank chemical pretty quick after you do uh, take delivery of the coach. Right down below uh, your gauge readouts, you have that switch for your water pump. So when it's illuminated red, the, the water pump is in the ready to be used mode. Doesn't necessarily mean the pump's actively running. Uh, there's a pressure switch in the pump that um, as you open up a faucet and you get the water to flowing, it will uh, sense that the pressure is decreased and that is actually what turns the pump itself on. Um, so the red light illuminated just means that it's ready for that function. It doesn't necessarily mean it's sitting there and running. Uh, here is the switch for your propane uh, side of your water heater. If you ever get this direct spark or DSI FLT, that stands for direct spark ignition uh, fault. If that light ever stays illuminated, that's telling you that you've tried to light the water heater, um, but for some reason it did not light. What you just saw uh, is a normal startup procedure. That light should illuminate initially, letting you know that it is a working light, um, and then it should go out after no more than 30 seconds like we just saw, and then the, the switch will stay illuminated, uh, letting you know that the water heater is in on and ready mode, and it works just exactly like um, the water pump switch does as far as that's concerned. This switch right down here, uh, tank heater's on. You just got an electric and that's a 12 volt heating element um, that's going to be stuck to the bottom of your gray and black uh, waste tanks and if you are going to uh, use the coach in below uh, freezing weather, you could utilize that switch in lieu of using the propane um, furnace at the rear of the coach. So we discussed how that heats the wet bay uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, this coach is a little bit different from coaches that I'm accustomed to delivering in that it has two uh, ways for you to heat the wet base. So that's actually really nice. So I guess if you ran out of propane, uh, you'd still be able to turn your tank heaters on and use your 12 volt battery to heat those uh, any emergency. Double check your manual on all that stuff. And if you really are gonna use the coach in cold weather, so it's not going to be winterized when it gets really cold. Cold. Just make sure um, that you're using the coach properly and that I've told you how to use it properly so that you don't incur any unnecessary damage to your plumbing system. Right next to the tank heater switch is the room slide out switch. And that's, I was pressing this out button and holding that um, as we were um, running this front room slide out a little bit earlier. Um, if I want to start the generator from inside the coach, got the switch to do that right here. And then I do have a, a clock that shows the time on the generator uh, right beside the switch. Uh, and it should be pretty close to the clock that you're going to see on the generator itself on the outside of the coach. Um, do take note of the time either on in this clock, the display will come on when the generator is actually running. Um, but take note of the, the time on the generator um, because since we have serviced uh, the generator, you'll, you'll want to have... Uh, or you'll have either one year from now or 50 to 150 hours depending on manufacturer spe uh, specs for that specific generator. Um, you'll have that period of time before you'll have to service it again. So uh, again, we've got all that taken care of for you on this coach. Right down um, below your um, 12 volt controls, you've got your front room uh, thermostat controls for the front of the coach. So this coach is outfitted with um, a uh, propane furnace that we talked about earlier. Um, you also have, I do believe, um, two heat pumps on this coach. So if you don't select the furnace mode, but you select heat like we have over here. So I press the furnace button so the, the lights turned out there and we have heat displayed here. We are after a few minutes or a few more seconds, our furnace should quit running 
um, and we should switch over and start running our rooftop AC in reverse, which turns that into a heat pump, and then we're making um, heat instead of cold at that point. Um, our heat pump, when we are using that, is only going to work down to about 40 degrees. Anything below 40 degrees, we're going to rely on the furnace. And then we've also got um, an electric fireplace here from, for some electric heating effect. And those are actually designed when, when you're using the electric heat uh, function on those uh, to heat areas of about four to 600 square feet. So you could almost uh, heat at least the front area of this coach really sufficiently with that. And, and that's just giving you the ability to control um, what uh, fuel source you're burning through, either electric or more propane uh, to heat the coach. So it's kind of just like that wet bay, I'd say this coach is a little uh, better outfitted for cold weather use than most in that you just have a couple more options uh, for keeping everything nice and warm if you need to. This same thermostat here is going to be responsible for um, running your cooling and so you would just select the cool mode and that would be displaying the, the red light right next to cool here. You've also got a just fan mode and that's just going to be bringing air from outside the coach and circulating it inside here. And then a, an added feature that I'm not really um, accustomed to, but I would love to have on an RV because that's kind of something you struggle with, uh, especially if you go down on the coach, is keeping the air inside a motorhome dry. Um, but if you're just needing to dry the air out, it looks like you can select the dry mode. And I would imagine um, that's gonna have a lot of the features that are running um, when the, the, the rooftop unit is doing its cooling, um, but it'll probably just cut out some of the cooling factor. There, there's a lot that goes into actually cooling the air that, that does a, a lot to dry it out. So uh, read up on that if you're curious to know exactly how it works. Um, but as far as actually running the, the temperature for the thermostat, you've just got your, your button like you would expect here. You can just go up and down. And then when I'm not wanting to use any heating or cooling on the front area of this coach, I'll just press the on off button until the display shuts completely off. You've got a thermostat that looks exactly like this uh, in the bedroom, and it's going to have all the same functions, but it's just for the rear uh, portion of the coach. It works exactly the same way. All right, so we're right down below our 12-volt controls uh, compartment in the front room thermostat controls, and we're in, we're in this next compartment that's also kind of hidden. You've got a sticker to remind you that your solar controller uh, is right back here, and it is. Uh, so this controller is fully automatic. Um, and it's set the way that you need it to be set or you'd want it to be set. What you're really going to be looking for on the controller is this display right here. It's telling you the DC amperage that's coming into the batteries off of the solar panels. We're under a metal awning today and the batteries are relatively topped off. Um, and there's really not any sun out. So we're showing what I would expect as a zero DC amps going in uh, to the batteries through the solar controller. If it's a nice sunny day, you may see anywhere from 15 to 50 DC amps going in uh, to the batteries through the solar uh, controller and solar panels, depending on uh, what you're set up with. Um, the idea, though, is to kind of um, take note of what you're displayed up here whenever your batteries are, say, half discharged and it's a fully sunny day and you know the solar panels are clean. Um, once that uh, decreases by half or however much um, decrease in efficiency you deem necessary or that you decide you want to get up on the roof uh, and, and re, uh, regain some of that uh, efficiency and, and all you need to do to, to get that efficiency back is just clean those solar panels off. So just as natural dirt and pollen and stuff out of the air uh, comes down on the roof of the coach that will decrease the ability for the sun to actually hit uh, those solar charging panels and then that will de decrease the efficiency. Um, of the solar uh, charging components um, over time. So that is a little bit of maintenance you have with that item. Uh, other than that, it should be maintenance free. Down below the solar charging controller, you've got your controller for your leveling jack system. And this equalizer system is uh, very simple and straightforward. This red light kind of flashing periodically here is letting us know that we have the jacks down. Um, whenever we turn the ignition on, we should get some kind of alarm uh, letting us know not to move the coach until we retract the jacks. If we want to retract the jacks, um, like I mentioned before, we don't want to retract the jacks until we bring the slides in. And we do have those out now, or we at least have the front one out. So we're not actually going to retract uh, the jacks. I'm just going to kind of point at the buttons. 
But once we have all the slides in and we are ready to retract the jacks, we just press all retract. And we're waiting for all four of these red lights to go out and that's our indication that the jacks are fully retracted. We still wanna get outside the coach at that point, double check and make sure that we visually see uh, that the jacks have fully retracted. Um, when we wanna level the coach out or the way that I leveled the coach out for today was again, before I ran the slides out, I pressed the power button and as soon as the power light was illuminated solid, I just pressed auto level. And then while the coach was actively um, going through its leveling process, I was just as still as I could be, you know, I could still breathe and everything, but try not to move the coach too much um, as I was uh, inside while the system was working. Uh, there is a sensor in here that senses for level. And if you're moving around, uh, usually what will happen is you'll either not be able to get the coach level or you'll have the coach um, way up off the ground um, before you actually do end up getting level. And it's going to be best if you can help it uh, to have the coach uh, leveled and keeping it as low to the ground so you're not taking a big step uh, to get up into the main entry door. So if you want to manually adjust uh, the level on the coach after you've auto leveled the coach and it's uh, finished running through its sequence, all you do is press on the down or up arrows that you're gonna see for front, right, rear, and left. And those switches are running both of the jacks, say for the front or right simultaneously. So you're never gonna run um, just one jack at a time on this coach. And they just got that set up as a safety feature so that you don't um, overextend the jacks and put a twist on the frame of the coach. So if I wanted to lift the front of the coach after I auto level, what I would do is press the down arrow, I believe, and I believe pressing the down arrow on this system is actually dropping the jack. So dropping the jack would make the, or pressing the jack down into the ground would make the coach raise. So we're gonna try that and, and verify that. Yeah, so pressing the down arrow on the front jack button actually makes the jacks go down more and it, that's actually lifting the coach. So it's backwards from what my brain thinks at least and I think it's the same way for most folks. So uh, hopefully that's another one of those things I've talked about enough uh, you'll either remember it or you'll be able to rewind the video and uh, check it out again. Um, right down below your leveling jack system you've got an auto gen start switch and this is just where you enable that system uh, and I am just going to point to the switch let you know where it's at and say for the full function of that definitely want you to read your manual and we're going to point out where all the manuals are uh, for the coach and chassis as we uh, continue showing you through. All right, so we've moved back here to the rear of the coach, and this is where, um, in here in the hall, opposite of the refrigerator, where you'll find the switch to run the rear slide room in and out. And I'm just gonna press down on the out portion of that switch, and you'll see uh, the bunk uh, beds along with the wardrobe and everything uh, moving out and giving you a lot more space in the rear of the coach here. We've already checked everything outside to make sure we've got plenty of room, uh, but you'll wanna make sure, of course, every time you go to a new location that you've got uh, plenty of room uh, before you start running those slides out. And if you feel like you need to get a spotter, uh, by all means, uh, go ahead and get you a spotter. All right, moving back here, I'm going to turn that off so it'll just be quiet for us. You do have um, day and night shades in all the, uh, or most of the windows on this coach. So you'll be able to have the, the night shade for full privacy. And then you've got the day shade there to kind of have some visibility out of the coach, um, but still have a little privacy there. Uh, this is kind of another one of those features that's gonna help you in the heat, uh, the hotter times of the year and the colder times of the year. Pulling both of those down at the same time just gives you a little more insulating effect on the windows. Um, but I did notice that most, if not all the windows on this coach are um, insulated. So that's kind of an upgrade. Um, to this coach that you don't see on all of them out there. This is your emergency exit window. If you needed to utilize that, you should lift up on either one of the tabs, press the window out. It is hinged. So if you needed to open that window for ventilation, you can, you're not gonna lose the window out of the back of the coach or anything like that. Um, do keep in mind that there's, there's not a screen, so you could have some uh, insect activity uh, that you didn't want. You've got at least one 110 receptacle over here on this side of the bed. I think you've got one over on the other side as well. Nice drawer, uh, bank of drawers here. Uh, reading lights that are switched on with a switch that's on the bottom of the lights themselves uh, right over top of the bed. Nice storage over top of the bed as well. 
Um, your light switch for the main lights in the bedroom uh, is right there underneath the thermostat. And when the slide is in, you still have easy access to all that, but it's one of those uh, switches that's kind of easy to get lost. So just remember, first time you're, you're coming back to the rear of the coach uh, trying to find that switch, it'll be to your right kind of uh, over beside the bed. And then if you forget where the thermostat is for the rear of the coach, it'll be right above that. And, and again, that thermostat works just exactly like uh, the thermostat in the front of the coach. It's just working the, the rear of the coach back here. So um, you should be able to use the instructional that we um, had up front if you need any further instruction on uh, the, the, the thermostat back here. You do have a TV uh, and DVD player back here, which is nice. Um, you've got a nice whole bunch of drawer storage here. Uh, nice wardrobe. And they have lined um, the bottoms of the drawers and the closet with cedar. And you may not think that's a big deal, but in RVs, when these are stored outside and it gets really hot, um, if you don't put some good smelling wood um, in your wardrobe or, or drawers, uh, you'll have like pine or whatever other kind of cheaper woods that they may use. Uh, and when those get really hot, uh, they, they tend to not smell very well and that'll kind of go into your clothing. So it's really nice that these folks have thought about that. Um, um, for you guys here, you'll have nice uh, cedar smell, if anything, and won't have to worry about moths and all that stuff um, in the clothes on this coach. So lifted up the... Uh, bed here and this is kind of a heavy uh, bed lift and they really didn't put um, any kind of prop uh, mechanism or anything like that um, in place because really this isn't a storage area and, and, and it's not really designed for a customer to get into it's more or less an easy access uh, for a technician like myself to get to uh, to get access to your uh, 110 breaker panel the back side of that you've got access to the back side of your water heater and you've also got access to your water pump, which is going to be right under these two uh, furnace ducts back here. Uh, so that's really nice as somebody that works on RVs. Uh, it's really nice to have all that access to all this stuff. But um, it, it'll be good for you in the future if you ever had any work that you needed to do, making uh, with everything as easy to get to as it is. Uh, and then again, if anybody else needed to do anything, uh, it'd be easy for them too. So this is your fresh water tank. And this is kind of what we were talking about. You can actually see we've got water filled up to about this level right here. And this is what we were talking about earlier. And maybe it, it makes a little more sense as to why you wouldn't want to overfill that tank. You just kind of got this um, wooden brace that's keeping it in place more or less. And with this being a, a plastic tank, if you overfill it, it can expand. And they just don't want that to expand so much so that it either breaks the, the, the wooden bracing or... Uh, there will be a couple places where the drain lines are plastic welded uh, and the fill lines are plastic welded into that tank. And if those are kind of um, overexpanded and stretched, they can fail on you. So I'll keep holding the bed up just so we can get a better view of this. Um, but this is your whole house uh, breaker panel here. And that's really just like your breaker panel at home. The only thing that's different is it's got 12 volt control built into it for all the 12 volt lights and other items on the coach. And um, so those are fused. Um, but all of that 12 volt or 110 is all labeled right down here on the door label. So that's very nice. You'll notice a fan run in here sometimes. Um, and it, it won't ever run uh, whenever you're not plugged into shore power or not running generator. Uh, but anytime you are running the generator or um, plugged into shore power so that your 12 volt system uh, or your 12 volt items aren't constantly having to run through your batteries, you've got a converter on this coach that's going to convert um, that 110 power to the 12 volt right there at the breaker panel. Uh, and again, that's a nice feature that just kind of gives you a little bit, I think, uh, more longevity in your house batteries. Drop the bed. And then right in here, um, this was just a closet and it was set up uh, to add a washer and dryer unit. Um, and apparently you guys went ahead and decided to go along with that option. Um, so we, we installed the washing machine down here and the dryer up here. Really good uh, feature to have, especially if you're going to be taking kids along and, and if you're going to be staying out for any time longer than a week. Um, I feel like I could speak to that personally. I have a combination unit which has the washer and dryer all in one unit and it's kind of useless so I get a little jealous whenever I see folks that have the actual stacked units. These are going to work 
real similar to your washer and dryer at home. They are just a little bit smaller is the only thing. But other than that, they work great. So, you, may, you know, maybe just three loads or, or two normal loads turns into three um, at the very worst of things. So sliding doors um, for uh, privacy in the bedroom. But you can also utilize the sliding doors. Go ahead and close both of those and have the bathroom door open if you want to have a little more um, kind of dressing room out here um, when folks aren't using the bunk area. But the, the sliding doors, just make sure that you've got these retaining straps in place before you get, in, uh, get going down the road or they will uh, start rolling on you and, and do a bunch of slamming and possibly uh, damage something on the coach as you're in transit. <clears throat> got your bunk set up here. Got nice curtains for privacy. You've got lighting on the upper and lower. Um, and they do have uh, these TV DVD player setups. Um, I think they're hooked into the TV as well, but sometimes they'll just have those set up as DVD and Blu-ray function only. Uh, so just kind of play with that and see what you've got. Um, got a little bit of storage under the bunk bed. Man, they even cedar line that. That's super cool. All right, now we got you over here to the bathroom and it's gonna be real straightforward and simple. Uh, we do have a light switch uh, for the lighting inside here, uh, right inside the door. Got a little bit of storage throughout. Nice porcelain toilet. Uh, where you're gonna flush that toilet is by depressing your foot on the foot lever, pressing all the way, get the water flowing, it'll open up the ball valve and go ahead and get the toilet to flush for you. If you wanna fill up the bowl, uh, just press down on that foot lever partially. So I clear that for you. Uh, you've got a nice stand-up shower over here. You just want to make sure that you've got the latching strap in place before you get going down the road so those doors aren't sliding around on you. Plenty of uh, storage space up here. You do have uh, your vent fan uh, for the bathroom. I think you've got a couple remotes for your vent fans. They should be uh, in one of the drawers in here in the kitchen, and I'll open that up and let you take a look. But definitely um, have that vent fan running anytime you are taking a shower. Uh, we want to kind of as we mentioned earlier, keep the coach dry as we can and, and pulling the moisture out of the bathroom area, especially when showering is going to be uh, probably our first line of defense on that. All right. Right over here is where we started out for the rear of the coach with the slide switch. Next to that, we've got a couple switches for some main house lighting uh, and then this hallway light here. Got a nice uh, pull out pantry. And it looks like at some point it may have had some more racks. Um, you would probably be able to get in touch with the uh, coach manufacturer if you wanted to get a couple more of these um, and have in place here. But I imagine somebody had some good use for that. Probably turned it into a broom closet or something like that. Um, previous owner. Uh, on your household refrigerator, again, whenever you are... Um, say going down the road, generator's not running, you're not plugged into shore power, this refrigerator will be running through the inverter. Um, and so it will be a drain on your coach batteries um, anytime you're not, you, you don't have charge going into those batteries. So just keep that in mind. Um, previous owner installed some Velcro strips on either uh, on the cabinet side of the fridge and the refrigerator and freezer doors. You've got, um, the other side of that strip here and it looks like they were installing those uh, for a little extra security going down the road. What I do in my motorhome is I just don't load up much um, in the doors and I, on this particular coach I just take it kind of extra easy um, on right turns uh, and you really kind of want to be doing that anyway in a motorhome. So uh, the idea is as long as you're not really loading these doors up uh, with a bunch more than what you would normally load into them uh, in your residence you and if you're not driving uh, like evil can evil you really shouldn't have the doors coming open on you but you do have the straps there um, if you want to use those uh, you've got an ice maker on this refrigerator and you'll want to leave the bell up in the off position especially when you're running your uh, water pump and, and pulling water out of the fresh water tank um, typically those aren't sanitized uh, there is a way that you can sanitize that if you want to use uh, water out of the freshwater tank to make ice, but it's a really lengthy process that most folks don't use. Um, so the idea is to leave this off whenever you get to your campground and you get hooked up to city water. You'll turn the bell down and that will turn the ice maker on. And what you'd want to do is make one batch of ice, go ahead and dump that. 
Uh, and then uh, after that first batch of ice that you dump, you can go ahead and let the ice maker run normally like you would at home and you'll have clean, uh, good usable ice. Right up here you've got your microwave. It is a convection oven as well. So uh, you've got these wire racks in here that will be utilized for the convection oven portion of the combo unit. Just make sure that when you're using the microwave that you go ahead and pull those out because those will react with the microwave like a piece of tin foil or something would. Right under this uh, countertop cover, you've got a nice propane stove. As long as we've got propane in our propane tank outside and we've got it turned to the on position, we'll just take the uh, controlling knob for whichever burner we want to light. So this center knob here is going to be the center burner. Turn it over to light and pretty quickly uh, hit your spark control knob. Uh, the idea is you want to go ahead and ignite that propane pretty quickly uh, before venting any of it off into the motorhome. Uh, so that you don't have kind of a, a flash when you finally do get that ignited. But we've got all three burners. We're going to get a good uh, blue flame for you. On this particular stovetop, I've noticed uh, that the grate makes contact um, with the countertop cover. So if you're running those burners any longer than what I just did, uh, you'll want to wait for all that to completely cool down before you replace uh, the countertop cover. Got a light that you can utilize for countertop lighting uh, on the bottom of the microwave like you'd expect or like you have uh, normally got at home. Some storage space down below the um, kitchen sink along with covers uh, over top of the kitchen sink so you just got a little bit extra countertop space um, when you're not utilizing that sink. And then you've got this uh, countertop extension here that you can go ahead and lift up and you've got a couple of supporting arms that will lock into place uh, to get you yet even more uh, countertop space. In this drawer below the stovetop we've got a ton of remotes so all of these uh, these three remotes here will work um, usually uh, your vent fans so you have two vent fans in the coach and three remotes oh never mind you do have three vent fans so you've got a vent fan in the bathroom uh, one in the bedroom and then one here in the kitchen so you'll have a remote for each one of those you can control those in their full functionality on switches that are installed right on the bottom of the fan itself so if you ever lose battery power or you just straight up lose a remote you'll stu still be able to use those uh, vent fans You've got your three uh, remotes here for each of the three TVs on the coach. So you've got your uh, living room TV, bedroom TV, and your outside TV. Um, you've got a Samsung DVD player at the living room and bedroom. Um, this is going to be your audio, I'm sorry, this is going to be your sound bar. And they do have those sound bars hooked up to the TV so you can kind of get um, a surround sound function out of those. This is going to be the remote for your electric fireplace. You do have full functionality of the fireplace through the switches on the fireplace itself, just like the vent fan. So if you lose a remote or you lose the batteries, you'll still be able to use the fireplace. These are kind of cool. Um, you'll have control of those uh, thermostats uh, that we went over that control your heating and cooling on the coach through remotes if you want to utilize those. Uh, that would be nice. Um, if you could get the remote item, maybe go through the entry door if you're outside, you want to uh, cool down the coach before you go inside or something like that. Um, these, this remote here will be for the outside radio and stereo, and I believe we mentioned that that's also a DVD player. And then finally, we've got these two little guys right here that are going to work the TV DVD players uh, over both of the bunk beds. So that's all the remotes on the coach. And again, that's in this top drawer uh, right below uh, your stove top. I keep, I'm in the habit of pushing these drawers closed um, because I'm used to 10 pound latches, which is what a lot of RV manufacturers use for keeping these doors or drawers closed when you're in transit. Um, but another kind of really nice upgraded feature to this particular coach is you've got the soft, uh, soft close drawer. And that is a nice feature so that it's nice and quiet whenever you close the drawer. Um, but that's also acting as your, your um, latch or your stop so that when you're in transit and you've got these drawers kind of weighted down, the most they're going to pull out should be that much. They shouldn't go sliding open on you. So that's a real nifty way they did that. These um, headphones here 
are four, and you'll have two for each of the um, DVD players that are over the bunk beds. And then uh, these are wall mounts for those vent fan um, remotes. Typically, folks will just leave those uh, um, in, a, in a drawer or beside the bed or whatever, as opposed to putting a hole through the wall. And speaking of that, if you do go ahead and mount those or anything else on the walls, just make sure um, that you pull a screw out of something like this mirror. Take note of the length of that and don't go any longer so you don't go uh, through the exterior wall or go through something that you're not supposed to on the coach. Everything else in this area should be pretty straightforward kind of storage stuff. I do think we've got, yeah, manuals for the entire living part of the coach right in here. And then we've got your chassis manual right here. Um, we pointed out kind of uh, quite a few of the lighting switches, but anytime that you're having trouble finding a light switch in the coach, um, start looking underneath the cabinets. So I've noticed that a lot of those are underneath the cabinets and they're a little bit hidden sometimes. Uh, you've got a switch for this main uh, dinette light right on the light itself. So that's one of those that's kind of hidden a little bit. But you can see the, the day night shades again uh, in all the windows. And that's kind of an upgraded feature for this coach. A lot of them will just have uh, the day shade only. So it is nice to have uh, the dual shade. Typically in the bathroom, if you do have a window, I don't think there is one in there. Um, but on the main entry door, you'll just have a nightshade only. So uh, you'll, you'll see that there's just a nightshade only on this coach, and that is normal uh, for most of the RVs out there. This dinette, um, you can release uh, the, the tabletop latch or lock mechanism. Go ahead and drop the tabletop down, um, and it's going to set right on top of these wooden rails here and I can go ahead and demonstrate it. This one's actually really easy to do. So you lift up both of the seat cushions and then you've got this release here. And even after you release that, they've got really nice heavy duty uh, gas shocks and they haven't made the tabletop so big and heavy that it just drops down, which a lot of the manufacturers do. And that's also kind of uh, rough on the wall. So this one, I really appreciate that it's nice and sturdy and it's not too heavy for the user. And I actually have to put quite a bit of pressure downward uh, to actually get the table to drop down in place. Now once I put those uh, seat cushions back down, I can take the seat back cushions and install them here. And I've got a nice um, dinette bed. And this one, this one I would say is probably about, it's probably about typical or standard size. So we're, we're really we're talking about one or two uh, smaller kids, not, not and I'm even kind of a smaller adult and I'd even be kind of cramped uh, trying to sleep on that thing. But you could if you have to. I just really appreciate uh, how nifty this thing is putting into bed mode because usually this is really hard to do. You're throwing the seat bottom cushions all over the motorhome or trying to find a place for those to go while you're lifting this. So. And then the gas shocks are strong enough where I'm barely pushing up on that thing. It's kind of lifting itself. So they actually uh, put a little thought into that. And whenever I engage the latch mechanism, I always like to kind of get down and visually see under the table that it latched in place. I just don't want to, especially with those heavy gas shocks, uh, to get a table like this loaded up for dinner. And about the time I put my pitcher of tea or whatever up here and, and that gives it just enough weight, the whole thing drops and I lose my... Uh, dinner or breakfast or whatever all over the motorhome and everybody so just keep that in mind all right um on your uh theater seating it's just kind of nifty uh reclining seats and you've got these tables that just uh, have these metal pins that you just set right uh, inside of this chrome or metal insert and then you've kind of got like a, a tray table or a laptop table or what have you uh, you can just put those up in a storage compartment when you're not using them. And then the uh, lever for the actual uh, recliner is going to be here and over here. And then that's going to set you up uh, very nicely to enjoy uh, your, your theater over here over top of the fireplace. So that's getting to be pretty much kind of... We could go into a little bit more detail on some stuff, but that's going to be pretty much everything you're going to need to know to get um, the living area of the coach going and having fun. Um, 
I think we'll probably take a couple of seconds and go over the front of the coach. Um, but just keep in mind, um, since you're not actually here with us today, if you have any other questions or we haven't covered anything uh, that you need to know about, uh, we want you to know about it. So you could contact us and we're going to have all the information uh, to be able to do that. You're going to have the manufacturer of the coach that you should be able to contact. And just remember, there's going to be a lot of content um, out on the internet that would help you with a lot of questions you might have on an RV. They may not have um, a video for this specific coach, but I, this is the first time I've ever delivered this particular brand of coach. Um, and I can say personally that just like most all the other RVs out there, they're relatively similar. So um, the processes um, and figuring out, you know, when do I use what, um, a lot of those questions can be answered online. But we're here for you um, on anything you need to know. So again, uh, keep that in mind. We're going to take a quick break and then go up to the front of the coach. Um, and then we'll be done with the walkthrough. All right, so we're up here in the cockpit area of the coach. And I just want to kind of real quickly point out uh, some of the switches and controls. Uh, keep in mind, if you haven't ever driven a Class A coach before, um, if you haven't taken any instructional class, they, that may be something that you'd want to do. Um, after a little bit of practice, uh, from my own personal experience, these things are fun to drive and they're not terribly difficult. Um, but there are going to be some things that you could take from uh, going through a class uh, that would help you maybe have a little bit more enjoyable uh, trouble-free trip as you start using your RV. So. I'm just going to sort of point out some of the controls. Again, you've got that Freightliner manual, um, but if you're kind of looking around and trying to figure out where an item may be, good thing about this dash area is it's simple enough um, that you, you could look around long enough and pretty much find everything you have available to you here. So uh, something over here um, that you really don't need to get a full-on visual of, I just want you to know that um, your cruise control consists of uh, this switch here to turn the cruise control system on, uh, this switch here uh, to set the cruise control or accelerate, and then you have, uh, I'm sorry, those are the only two switches that uh, uh, run the cruise control. So other than the switches being a little bit different, it should work like uh, cruise control that you're running on a daily driver. Down below the cruise control switches, you have a switch uh, for your park lights which is putting the switch to the down position, or if you put the switch to the middle position, that's off. And then if you press the switch to the up position, that's gonna be your park lights and headlights. Um, there is no automatic uh, setting for the headlights on this coach. Uh, you have a switch down here that says increase and decrease. And that is going to be the um, lights on your gauge cluster. So if you're driving at night and you want to dim the gauge cluster down, you'll just press the decrease button over here. Right up here on the um, left hand uh, steering column paddle, you're going to have your windshield washers uh, for washing the windshield on your press button here. Turning the end of the um, uh, paddle will turn your windshield wipers on. Uh, hitting the, the selector down or up is going to get your turn signals and those uh, uh, side view cameras engaged. Um, and then pushing the lever forward with the headlights uh, turned on will uh, turn on your bright lights. And so pulling the lever back is going to cancel those. You've got your hazard switch here. And on your steering column, when you want to uh, raise or lower that, you've got a foot pedal that's kind of that you'll grab with your left foot kind of in the steer, uh, center of the steering column. And when you press on that, that's going to allow you to tilt uh, the steering wheel. And it does have a telescope feature too. So with that foot pedal still depressed, you can pull the steering wheel in and out. Um, this coach is set up with a brake controller, which is uh, another upgrade that you don't see on a lot of these uh, Freightliner chassis coaches just from the factory. I think a lot of people will add them on after the fact, um, but maybe a, a good benefit of getting a, a good new to you and still really new pre-owned coach is that you're not paying an individual for all these extra accessories that you're getting here. So um, if you haven't ever used one of these, uh, you can go online or you should be able to find an instruction manual for this specific one, but it's just going to control the amount of air or power that's getting transferred uh, through either the seven way uh, or your air brake function. Um, I'm sorry, it doesn't control the air. It only controls the seven way. So if you're running a, a large trailer that has electric trailer brakes um, behind this coach, uh, this is what you'll use if you need to turn the gain up or down 
uh, to have those bre brakes engaging either harder or more softly. Um, this switch here, it's um, labeled marker INT for marker intermittent. And if you um, have an 18 wheeler or another RV pass you, and you want to flash your uh, marker lights, letting them know that they're clear of you, you'll just click that a couple of times. This switch here is going to turn your fog lamps on. And then this switch here is going to um, lock your um, rear axle. And that would be uh, in the event that you're trying to pull out of your campsite and there was mud or it was slick and you just had one wheel turning and you need both of those turning, I think. Um, you have to hold on this switch to get that um, rear axle to stay locked in or that rear gear to stay locked in, but that'll be useful to you in some situations. Here's a transmission selector that we mentioned before. Um, you're gonna have a digital display here. Um, and it's pretty straightforward on actually selecting the gears. Um, don't forget you can ch uh, check your transmission fluid level through that uh, gear selector there. You've got your controls for your um, driver and passenger um, windows. So if you want to roll those down, that's the switches for those. You have heated mirrors, and it's usually just the upper portion of the mirrors uh, on your side view mirrors, I, I should say. And that's just so if you've got ice uh, or frosting on those, you can depress that switch and go ahead and get those defrosted. You've got your lock and unlock just for the front two doors uh, up here. And then this switch right here is going to be regen for the um emissions control on the coach and that works in conjunction i believe with the diesel exhaust fluid system but they kind of change this from year to year on uh, chassis manufacturer to chassis manufacturer so definitely be sure and read your manual uh, or go online and see for this particular year model of freightliner chassis when and how they're going to want you to use that particular feature um, right here you've got a suspension height uh, up or down switch and what you want to do every time especially before you level the coach um, you you'll want to press the down portion of the button and what that'll do is it'll actually dump the rear airbags um, on the coach and it'll lower the rear end so that as you level the coach out um, by the time you get it level you you aren't uh, too high up off the ground um, anytime before you're going to get ready to go down the road, you'll want to be sure and press that suspension up button or put the suspension uh, switch to the up uh, portion of the switch. That switch may or may not automatically flip uh, to the up uh, setting once you go over a certain speed. So if you're dropping the suspension and utilizing that maybe to pass under a lower garage door uh, opening or something like that, just be sure that you've read your manual and that you fully understand how that switch works so that, uh, for example, you're not inadvertently having the coach air up as you're right underneath the opening of that garage and that could cause damage to your garage um, or the coach, probably both. The last switch over here um, is your engine brake uh, switch and I've got that in the up position or on position. And what that uh, is going to do is whenever you either release off the accelerator or on some coaches it doesn't engage until you tap the brake or get on the brake but probably on this coach if you release off the accelerator switch is in the on position switch in the on position basically is telling the coach to run a computer program when your foot comes off the accelerator and that computer program is transmission downshift to second gear as quick as you possibly can without doing any damage to yourself or the engine on the coach. And the other part of that program is uh, there's a baffle that's gonna drop down in the exhaust system on your engine, uh, kind of simultaneously while the transmission is uh, being controlled so that the engine is kind of turned into a compressor um, more than an actual engine. And it'll help just the engine itself running in that mode will help you slow down you combine that with downshifting and then uh, you'll be inputting the braking yourself to go ahead and finish slow in the coach to whatever you need it slowed to. But you'll notice while the engine brake switch or the, while the engine brake is being utilized or it's in the on position that you'll be using a lot less brake um, than what you would if the engine brake is off or not being used. So 
I'm going to have the engine brake in the off position when you leave out of here because I don't know if you're accustomed to driving one of these coaches or not. Um, but if you haven't driven a coach with an engine brake a lot, I highly recommend that once you get out here on the service road, maybe take a couple laps, turn the engine brake to the on position uh, and have it engaged just so you can know what to expect uh, when you're up on, uh, once you get up on the freeway. But again, I'm going to have it in the off position uh, for you to get started. Down below all that, you've got air condition controls. It's going to be just like uh, air condition controls on a daily driver. And you've got a couple of power outlets uh, over here as well. The infotainment center, uh, you're going to be able to Bluetooth into. You can connect. Um, oh, I didn't realize we were just running static the whole time. You can connect directly in. I think I've got it doing like a search or something now. You can uh, connect directly into the stereo with uh, iPhone or HTC. Um, if you want to update, update the navigation on this, the system, you'll have a nav card that'll be able to be taken out, updated, and replaced here. Um, to enjoy navigation, just click on the Navi button. That'll get us into navigation. And this is probably one of my uh, favorite navigations out there. It's just easier to use and then the other kind of button that you'll you'll probably use a bunch is the camera button and when you press that that'll get you that rear view camera displayed there so if you're gonna have a tow vehicle back there all the time uh, or a trailer you may want to be keeping an eye on that so that's what that'll be used for uh, as far as all your gauges go uh, up on the actual dash they're gonna be pretty straightforward the only thing that may be a little different um, if you haven't had a um, air brake or air suspension coach before are the air gauges and the main thing you need to know is anytime the gauges either one of them is in the red you're not going to be able to release the park brake which is the big orange or big yellow lever over here uh, and then when you're in the yellow uh, that's just letting you know that the system is still working at air and up really before you release the park brake and start driving away you want to see the gauge uh, both gauges up in the setting that we're uh, seeing right up here. So you've got your fuel gauge above those and then you've got your diesel exhaust fluid gauge uh, right below the fuel gauge. We've got your uh, fuel tank filled or both fuel tanks filled with diesel um, and then we've got your diesel exhaust fluid uh, should be at about three quarters or so. That's the only fluid that we don't top off and um, we don't top that off or I don't top that off because it actually goes bad after uh, a while and I don't know how long you're going to store this coach. So uh, one thing while I'm talking about the fuel gauge that I did not mention about the diesel generator is that it is fueled off the same um, either one of the tanks as um, that fuels the main engine. So I would imagine that probably uh, we're fueled off of this driver's side tank and so that once the driver's side tank runs completely out of fuel, I believe uh, that your generator is going to run out of fuel and they do that on purpose so that you'll still have the additional tank to get you down the road uh, or get you back on the road if you were in a dry camping situation and ran through that fuel so that would be another one of those items since I, this is my first time with this particular brand of coach that i haven't actually seen for myself um, so double check your manual and make sure you know how much fuel you're going to have available to that generator and when up here on the gauge you should expect to see the generator run out of fuel so it doesn't work anymore until you get more fuel um, you've got a little button over here that's going to get you through some of the information up here on the digital portion of the gauge cluster. When the engine's not running, you're just going to show uh, a digital um, mileage on the coach like we're displaying now. Um, probably the last thing I want to do is just show you uh, that you've got a set of keys here. So both of these are going to be your ignition keys. You've got one and a copy. You've got your main entry door deadbolt keys. Got one and a copy. And your main entry door, what I call a secondary lock. So that'd be like the doorknob lock at your normal residence. And then this is gonna be uh, all your storage compartment doors. Be this key, and there's its copy. And then I mentioned you had uh, a key for your outside TV and that's gonna be these two guys here. And then the last two little silver keys uh, let's say 751 are going to be for your um, gravity fill for your fresh water tank. So I told you about filling up through the city water connection, but you can actually um, just take a, a water hose and install it in a gravity fill 
uh, and, and fill the fresh water tank on this coach that way too. So I think, let me try this little key fob here. So they actually have a key fob set up to the main entry door, um, which is a really nice feature to have. Um, and then I did notice that there was a key combination pad um, on the door. Uh, I don't know what the combination is on that. Uh, so what you'll want to do once you get bored of uh, finding everything else out on the coach there is to find out is you could just get in contact with the manufacturer and they'll have you an instruction on resetting um, that particular um, keypad that you have on your entry door. But this key fob here is doing the exact same thing that the push button key, uh, numerical keypad is doing right now. So that's pretty much everything. There's going to be a couple items uh, that I just missed or didn't go over and I'll apologize for that. Um, but there's no way I can really get every single thing in the video here without you prompting me on some of the uh, items that, that you may want to know unless I told you about every nut and bolt and we none of us wants that so uh, Just like I said before we're here for you. Um, we'll have you business cards with all of our contact information all right, Well, thanks for watching our video and hope you have a good day